For more updates, click on subscribe and click on bell button for latest notifications. Hello friends, welcome to Tech ARK IT YouTube channel. My name is Ravi. In this video session, we are going to see that one of the interview question which is um, what is the difference between INIT and system D so which is a older um, version and the newer version of system D so what is the difference between this so how can you uh, tell the difference between uh, INIT the initialization as well as the system D so let's see that so First of all, if you understand what is INIT, R, C, C, INIT, which is the uh, naming um, which is provided. So INIT, R, um, C, C, V, INIT means uh, system V initialization um, is the traditional system initialization process used in Unix-like operating systems. So this is a traditional system initialization. It's the predecessor to more modern initialization systems like uh, system D. System V was developed uh, based on the system V Unix release, the system V Unix release which introduced a standard set of initialization scripts and run level. So if you understand that um, before that like um, RHL5, RHL6, CentOS5 or CentOS6, the Fedora older versions used to have the um, scripts, initialization scripts and run levels. So those are the SQL initializations like it would be in a SQLization uh, process when the system is booting up, right? So that is the simple, it's called as an, a system V, is a traditional system initialization process used in Unix-like operating systems. So let's see how the INIT can help uh, the previously systems right boot process so when the computer boots up the system BIOS or UEFI firmware hands control over to the bootloader so which is called as a grab uh, the bootloader then loads the Linux kernel into memory and process the control to it so that's the boot process uh, initially handled by the INIT and kernel initialization so the kernel initializations uh, initializes hardware, mounts the root file system and starts the initial process. So the kernel initialization actually initializes the hardware and mounts the root file system then starts the initialization process. So actual initialization process, the INIT process is the first process to start by the kernel by the fork call which has a process ID is 1. So always if you look at the, the first process ID is one which is the for call initiated uh, started by the kernel. Uh, it's the responsible for the initializing the system and managing the system services. So, so how it is managed is like once that initialization process is done the process ID is allocated then it starts the all the services in a sequential manner. And run levels. Run levels is basically handed like based on the which run level you want to utilize. So it has a purpose like um, uh, organize the system startup and shutdown process into the run levels like how the system should start and which run level has which um, uh, config enabled and all these uh, the scripts enabled uh, defines in the state of the system. Then uh, which indicates that which service to start and stop. Uh, the common run levels uh, which might be include the single user mode, multi user mode, graphical user mode, right? So there might be like a, a restart, shutdown, all this uh, is on a uh, run level process. Initialization script. So most of the INIT process is based on the sh shell scripts. So that's the most dependence and easy way to set up and it's a small and very lightweight uh, system like uh, the it will initialization scripts uh, located in a directory called slash etc initd are shell scripts responsible for starting stopping and managing the individual services so these scripts are executed sequentially during the system startup and shutdown so in while shutting down also it will actually uh, stop all the services and shut down the system so Another thing is that 
dependencies like dependency handling so dependency handling uh, it's relays on a simple dependency system so it does not have any complexity over here where services are started in a predefined order uh, to their dependencies example so how the de uh, defined order is defined so based on that it actually um, start up and stop the services however managing the complex uh, interdependencies between the services can be challenging with the uh, initial process like INIT process because um, so if one service is stopped so the service is dependent on another service so it cannot handle that complexity over here so it def defined in a sequential manner how it is defined so that way it will actually stop the services and in the same way it will start the services manual service management so it's always the administrators often manually manage the services using the command line like a service command or the chk config command which interact with the initialization scripts to start stop enable disable the services so whenever you put like chk config on on particular uh, service name so that that config is enabled the script is enabled on the slash etc NITD so that it based on that it the service will be started so the csk config is mainly the command so it can easy to interact with the script to start stop enable disable the services in the startup so that's the INIT or the CSV INIT how it actually handles the um, system so this is the uh, more thing but here what is basically lacking here is that it cannot able to do the parallelization uh, executing the uh, services or anything in parallel so it's all sequential steps so that the boot process will take longer time to execute it and there is no not much of any dependency handling here so because if it is a complex dependencies so it could not able to handle that so that's the major lacking between the um, initial uh, init system so let's see how this system d is actually evolved and solve the uh, problems in a newer operating system so what is exactly the system d system d is in a modern system and service manager for Linux distributions, it serves as the replacement for traditional CSV and IT system initialization and service management framework. Systemd was created by Leonard Pottering and Key Severs and is now the default initialization system for many Linux distributions. So this is a new system which is basically created uh, newly for the new systems so now most of the operating system which is from RHL 7 8 and 9 uh, CentOS 8 9 so Fedora new versions and Ubuntu new versions all comes with the system D so the default uh, initialization system for many Linux distributions so there are so many distributions most of these like SUSE Ubuntu Linux Red Hat all this uh, comes with uh, this system D uh, initialized basic one so what actually system d do and what improvements does it have so first one is that simple fast and efficient boot up so system d aims to prove boot times through parallelization and efficient service management so most of the stuff like in a previous init that was in a sequential execution so one service starts then it waits for until the service to be started then it will go for the next service but here so it can start all the services most of the services in parallel uh, dependencies can also be handled here perfectly so that's the major advantage here and mount handling mount handling means system d can manage file system mounts including mounting and unmounting the drives snapshot functionality so this is the major uh, focus like example if your system is corrupted or during the uh, system starts up though the snapshot functionality can able to revert your system to the previous state like system d supports the uh, system snapshots allowing for easy rollback to previous system state so example if you want to uh, revert back to your previous system state you can do that controlling running services 
uh, systemd provides a tool for starting stopping restarting and managing the system services which is called systemd uh, like enable the services start stop the services so that you can do that using the systemd event logging with a general d so event logging is basically a major uh, system like in a previous versions like init system so it used to have syslog but here uh, general d is the one so integrates with the system d general general d uh, which provides centralized lagging and advanced filtering capabilities like uh, in previous messages like if you want to filter you have to use the grep and all but here it can provide a much granular filters you can use based on the errors warning and all this stuff on the general ctl command uh, so automatically restart the crashed services so this is the major capability that if the system is automatically take care of the services itself so the crashed services that would be a major major um, impact on the service level uh, availability like example system can automatically restart the services that have crashed or exited unexpectedly right so if the administrator is not monitoring or not available during that time so it, it's only automatically do the restart which is crash services so it's a major impact on the service availability for the production like environments like mount and automated mount points for maintenance so example uh, the system d can handle mount points and auto mounts making it easier to manage uh, file systems and uh, storage devices so auto mounts can be do um, like auto mounted process like process tracking via linux control groups so here the new system d has a c groups c groups called system system d utilizes the c groups for uh, resource management and tracking the processes so not only this there are major other uh, simultaneous uh, socket and d bus access for the faster service startup like the system d supports the socket and the d bus activation allowing the services to start more quickly when needed right so there are other aspects of the system d also is improved um, like dynamically controlling the services job scheduling and user logging management on demand service activations so battery optimizations there are major uh, things which is included in the system d as well so let's see what are the major five differences between the init and system d so if you take system d so system d is a powerful parallelization capabilities like as i already told you um, in a previous slide like uh, it could able to start all of the services in a parallel so it can able to handle the um, dependencies much faster so but init is an a sequential execution so one by one it execute the uh, services um, in system d advanced dependency handling uh, it is included like it could able to handle complex dependencies um, on the system d but uh, in init so there are a poor dependency handling because uh, it starts sequentially if the dependent service is not started it still waits for that and uh, if some services dependency service is not started it fails to start that service logging mechanism so logging mechanism in the system d is generally is utilized and the init system is logging mechanism is uh, syslog d so that is the um, system d is utilized for the logging mechanism and system d for service management so system d is the command which can utilize system ctl command for the service management um, used more shell scripts so example for managing the services and also it utilizes the uh, scripts which are located in slash etc and itd uh, location and there are multiple scripts based on the state it will enable disable start stop all this stuff happens using the shell scripts but during the time so it was a very lightweight and very capable of using the shell scripts but keep on increasing the services and complexity the shell scripts becomes a cumbersome process so resource control so for the resource control uh, system d has c groups so it makes very easy to handle the um, resource management tracking of the processes 
uh, on the system D uh, but in INIT so there is no such a mechanism uh, exist but they can still handle the resources but it's not that effective as like uh, system D so these are the major five differences between the system D and INIT so I hope you understand what to be uh, answered if any interviewer ask what is the difference between INIT and system D uh, thanks for watching stay tuned please subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos and courses uh, if you like the video press the like button if you want to pass the feedback how the video is just comment below so we'll try to answer every question what you are put on the comment please follow us on social networking site uh, one is uh, facebook the facebook page name is uh, at linux arkit uh, you can click on this button here and click like page so that you can follow us on facebook the next one is instagram uh, instagram name page name is arkit.co.in click on follow button to follow me and uh, twitter if you have any questions on uh, subject line or if you have anything you can just tweet me at a ravikumar48 so i will reply you most on the tweet back for anything related if you want the latest articles on my website so here is my website details and email address details you can reach me over here